I was kind of spoiled straight out of the gate. You know, it was a script that was about something. It felt like there was a, there was a kind of a social or a moral profundity to it. Okay, guys, I ain't taking any of this seriously. Uh, all I ask is that you do what you have to do so we can live together. The Tiger Line, it was just a collective. It was just, it was just like a glorified theater troupe. We did boot camp for two or three weeks. We stayed in the barracks and did the whole thing and got up to the rattling of a stick in a bin at five o'clock in the morning and out on foot marches for two or three hours and made it as close to what the experience could be, of course, without any of us being in any real jeopardy. It's pretty fancy shooting, Tex. Thank you. It was just luck, Jim. I could have killed you. After Tigerland, when Tigerland came out and, and the film was pretty well received and I got some decent notices, it kind of all went ape <laughs> after that, it went mad. I had these opportunities that were just being thrown at me. It was, it was insane, it was something that, I don't know if you can ever be prepared for the kind of success that was being offered to me so fast, you know? Why don't you cut the cute act, Danny boy, and tell me exactly what it is you're looking for? Flaws. There hasn't been a murder in six years. There's nothing wrong with the system. It is perfect, I agree. I think Matt Damon was supposed to do the role originally, and I think, I don't know, there was some clash with his schedule. And, uh, and I got a call from my agent saying, Steven Spielberg wants to meet you, which was a shocker. You know, because I'd grown up, I was watching Jaws and Close Encounters and Indiana Jones. And we sat down and we talked and I shared a sardine sandwich with him, which was enough for me if I didn't get the role, just to share a sardine sandwich with Steven Spielberg was kind of, I had nailed the day. Oops, gone. Sorry, Danny, I'm gonna have to give you the full tour some other time. And, you know, I was working with Tom Cruise, which, you know, I was 24 or five, and it was my third or fourth film, and I was just going, what the hell? You know, he'd be very competitive and very physically engaged, and did you see the stunts he did on Mission Impossible where he's holding onto the side of the plane? I mean, that's mental illness. That's not bravery, I mean, that's mad. I remember him walking on the set and screaming, are we making an action movie, then why don't I hear action? <laughs> and just tell me what the f you want from me, anything you want. Oh. Hello. There you are. I thought I was talking to myself again. Anything you want, I'll do it. Just tell me. Tell Kelly about the real stew. About your little motel. Phone booth was a lot of fun. Phone booth was a challenge. I think nine days in the booth. We shot one day in Times Square. To do a feature film in 10 days is it just never happened. Jim Carrey was going to do it. And I think there was a world I'd heard Mel Gibson and Will Smith. And people were trying to crack this Larry Cohen script and see how it could be done. And, and how it could be done without being an exercise of, of cinematic tedium, um, because it was all set in the one place. And Jim was gonna do it, he dropped out for whatever reason, and then Joel called me, because we'd worked on Tigerland together, and he said, listen, I have this script, will you have a look at it? And I read it and loved it, and just saw it as the challenge that it became. I killed a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> and save the next little boy. In Bruges, that was a great script. I mean, he's so brilliant, Martin. You know, I asked him how long it took him to write In Bruges, and he, ah, three weeks. <laughs> like, and one draft, last draft type of thing. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to run out there, come back in 10 minutes, and find you hiding in a cupboard. I completely promise, Harry. I'm not going to risk having another little kid die, am I? I tried to talk Martin out of casting me because I thought the script was so good that people would arrive to the cinema. I had had a bit of a reputation, I'd gone through some things, rehab, and, and I was like, this is too good. People will come in with a certain opinion of what to expect or baggage in relation to me. I said, you should really find an unknown actor to, to cast in this, and he told me to shut the up. Your heart's on the loose You roll them cigars with nothing to lose Yeah, I'd play guitar. I remember Scott Cooper, who on stage the camera came in and I was playing the guitar and he was like, P -p angle up, tilt up, tilt up, tilt up, because my fingers were all over the place. It was great, there was music everywhere on that set. There was people in the corner strumming guitars, Jeff had his guitar and he'd be picking it up and you know, the energy on the set matched the energy of the film very much. It was a very collective environment and I loved it. I got to get up on stage at a Toby Keith concert, which was weird in front of like 14,000 people. I was expecting to be glassed. And, but everyone was very supportive when they to were told. They gave us 12 minutes in between the opening act and Toby Keith and his band coming out. We had 12 minutes to shoot, so they had the camera set up and myself and Jeff got out and people had been warned that we were doing a film and, and they were all into it and, and engaged with what was going on. It was cool, it was fun. We gotta trim some of the fat around here. Trim the, what do you mean by trim the fat? 
I want you to fire the fat people. You know, there was no emotional connection per se to the character. But um, <laughs> could you emotionally connect to that character and live with yourself? Margie's not fat, she's pregnant. I'm not gonna fire her. Well, fine. Uh, stay where you are, Margie. Congratulations. It was fun, it was fun design. At first, the producers were like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's, I think they were like, we're hiring him for his head, or we want him to be him, kind of thing. And I was kind of like, yeah, well, this. So we had to do a camera test. So they tested the belly, and they tested the comb over, and the whole thing. And they didn't want to go with it, I don't think, but they were kind of like, oh, it's kind of good. And, uh, and that was it. Yeah, that was a blast. That was a blast. Now, the fact that you'll turn into an animal if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here is not something that should upset you. Now, have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. I read the script and I didn't quite know what to make of it. Because if you think that the film is strange, when you see the film, which people have told me they thought it was, I mean, you have the benefit of the visualization of the world. You try and read that without any assistance in that vein, it was just like, what the f is going on? Oh, you're my best friend in the whole world. I don't think I'm your best friend in the whole world. You used to spend much more time with John. Oh, who's John? That character was very sweet and I think about as lacking in guile or subtext as any character I've ever played. I got big, for me, I got big. I ate a lot of ice cream, just in the microwave melted, because I couldn't eat anymore, I just melted in the microwave, blah, 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 and chug it back. And you know, cheeseburgers and fried foods for breakfast, and it gets boring when you have to eat. Part of the fun of doing is you know you're not supposed to. You know what I mean? You know it's kinda, when you have the directive that you, you're supposed to, it kinda, it got dull very fast. So setting a pack of dangerous creatures loose here was, It was just another accident, is that right? Yeah, J.K. Rowling's first script, really beautiful read. I mean, just so fantastical, her imagination and just the, the logic that she creates within this world of fantasy. I refuse to bow down any longer. The reason why that film took five and a half months was because there were so many big set pieces and huge camera cranes, and so a lot of the time it can be very choppy. You can be shooting just, you know, for 30 seconds to get one bit, and usually in independent films or small films, which I probably prefer, you know, you're doing decent long takes all the time. It's the process is a lot more simple, and within that simplicity, it allows you a greater freedom. 